Hello guys, welcome back to the No Mystery Science channel. Before I start this exercise, I'd like to subscribe and like this video. Now we're gonna uh, work with like 3D vectors with this exercise. So determine the magnitude and the coordinate direction angles of the force acting in the bracket. Remembering what is a coordinate direction angles is the angle that the force do with the axis 45 with the axis x 60 with the y axis and we don't know the angle with the y axis but we can use the property that says cosine alpha square plus cosine of beta square plus cosine of gamma square is equal 1. Alpha is usually the angle with the x-axis, beta is the angle with y-axis, and gamma is our angle with the z-axis. Now we're going to find the gamma angle for the force 2 here, the force 2, we're going to find our gamma angle using this uh, equation here. So I have alpha is cosine of 45 square plus cosine of 60 square plus cosine of gamma square equals 1. So I have my cosine square of gamma is 1 minus cosine of 45 square minus cosine of 60 square. I have my cosine of gamma square is 0 0.5. So I know my cosine of gamma can be plus or minus, sorry, my cosine of gamma is 0 0.25 and I know my cosine of gamma is plus or minus 0 0.5. Since I know my F2 is pointing down according to the z-axis, I know my cosine of gamma is minus 0 0.5 and if you want to know the value of gamma 120 degrees. Now, I'll, I can find my components because I know my F2x is equal F2 times cosine of alpha. My F2y is F2 times cosine of beta. And my F2z is equal f2 times cosine of gamma. So here my f2x is equal 600 newtons times cosine of 45. So my f2x is equal 424.3 newtons in i direction, that's our x. My f to y is equal 600 times cosine of 60. So my f to y is equal 300 newtons in our j direction. And here my f to z is equal 600 times cosine of 120. Or if you want to put minus 0 0.5, you can f to z is equal minus 300 newtons in k direction. Now we're gonna save these values and we're gonna work for our force number one. Force number one, I don't have my coordinate angles because my 30 degrees is an angle that's the projection of F1 in the plane x, y, and here I have my z axis 
here's my F1 in Z axis. Here is a projection that I won't call anything. And here in dark blue will be my F1 Y and pointing back there will be my F1 X. So here we can see that my F1 in Z is equal F1 times sine of 45 degrees. So I have my F1Z is equal 450 newtons times sine of 45 degrees. F1Z is equal 318.2 newtons in k direction. Now we're going to find our component here. Here is our F1x. Here in red, I'm going to call A. Our A here is a mid vector that I that I know that the value is F1 times cosine of 45 degrees. This is in the plane x, y. So I know that this vector, I can find my F1, x, because my F1, x is equal a times sine of 30 degrees, since I point in my negative direction is minus. To be easier to visualize, I'm going to draw here. Here's my x-axis. Here's my y-axis. My vector A is laying down here. Here's my vector A. And according to our question, here is our 30 degrees. And here in yellow will be our F1x. And here will be our F1y. I hope it's better for everyone visualizing. Here will be our z-axis. So continue to our F1x. I know my F1x is equal minus 450. That's our F1 times cosine of 45 to finish our a vector times sine of 30 degrees. So I know my F1x is equal minus 169.1 newtons in I direction. Now our F1y is equal A times cosine of 30. Since I'm going to the positive direction of y axis, I don't need to put a minus. So my F1 y is equal 450 times cosine of 45 degrees that's our a vector times cosine of 30 degrees so my f1 y is equal 275.6 newtons in j direction so and just to recall, I have my F1 being minus 159.1i plus 275.6j plus 318.2k newtons. And my F2 is equal 424.3i plus 300j minus 300k newtons in our F1 and F2. So to find our resultant force, We can do 
F1 plus F2. So my resultant force will be 424.3 minus 159.1 I plus 275.6 my plus 300 J plus 318.2 minus 300 K. So I have my vector form of my resultant force is equal 265.2 I plus 575.6 J plus 18.2 K. We know to find the magnitude of our resultant force is to all the components square plus 575.6 square plus 18.2 square. I know the magnitude of my resultant force is equal 634 newtons. So we found our magnitude here. Now we're going to find our coordinate angles. So just to recall, I have my magnitude is equal 634 newtons. My resultant force in X is equal 265.2 newtons. My resultant force in Y is 576.0, 5.6 newtons and my resultant in our z direction is 18.2 newtons. Now we're going to use our equations from our first slide that I know that our cosine of alpha is equal the resultant force in x over our resultant force. So our cosine of alpha is 265.2 over 634. So my alpha is equal 65.3 degrees. Using the same process for our y-axis, cosine of beta is equal the resultant force in y over in our resultant force, cosine of beta is equal 575.6 over 634. So our, so our beta value is equal 24.8 degrees. And our cosine of gamma is our resultant force in z direction over our resultant force I have cosine of gamma is equal 18.2 over 634 so I know my gamma is equal 88.4 degrees so this is our coordinate angles that are going to give our direction for our resultant vector. Thanks for watching until the end. Don't forget to subscribe the channel and like this video and share your friends. Thank you. See you in the next class.